Do you ever find yourself yearning to look beyond the obvious and dreaming about what's possible in your next chapter? Welcome to the Next Chapter Experience. I'm your host, Jeanette Blissett, former corporate executive who turned the page to become a best-selling author, entrepreneur, designer, and lifestyle business consultant. Episodes feature me and a kaleidoscope of guests who share their journeys with wit, candor, and humor, breathing life into real talks about things that matter most. I believe we all have a fire burning within us, waiting to be unleashed and shared with the world. It may just be a matter of time. So let's get together, turn the page, and get this adventure started. Welcome to the Next Chapter Experience. I'm Jeanette Blissett, your host, and today's guest is Jenny Lee. Jenny is a Nautilus Book Award-winning author of three books, Spark Change, True Yoga, and Breathing Love. Jenny is a spiritual coach who combines spiritual counsel and yoga therapy to help you find clarity, inspiration, and joy. Jenny is also a yoga therapist with over 20 years of experience. She is passionate about sharing practices that help you live a peaceful and purposeful life. Jenny, thank you for being my guest today on Next Chapter Experience. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you. I am happy that you're here as well, because in these days and times when there are so many things going on, not only in our homes and our communities, but in the world in general, you have got to take a moment to breathe. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about that. So let's go ahead and dig in. I wanted to talk to you about the practice. Take me there. How you landed in this space and then let's talk about your evolution and how others can perhaps mirror what you've done over the years. Well, I'm always happy to talk with people about how we can remain more centered amidst the chaos of modern life. You mentioned taking a breath, and I'll just start by saying that even though I've taught this material for 25 years, I still catch myself not always taking a deep breath. I did it just last night. I woke up in the middle of the night with one of those moments. I have a lot going on personally right now about to travel and I just realized that I wasn't breathing deeply. And so this practice of setting aside time to check in with our, firstly, our breath, literally, how are we breathing? How deeply are we breathing? And then what is happening internally? Where are we locating ourselves in our consciousness is so important that we don't just sort of get thrown into every day and pulled around in a thousand directions actions by whatever stimulus is coming at us. And I think we see it all around us in the world that people are highly reactive rather than responsive. And it really does take an intentionality about grounding and centering ourselves daily through many different practices that I write and teach about that we can chat about to be able to come into each day from that place of responsiveness rather than reactivity. So I guess I'll just pause there to see (laughs) I'm on the right track. Let, Let me check in with you on that. <laughs> check in just a little bit. You mentioned practices. So can you give us an example of a practice that will help us with that? There's several. In all three of my books, I write about specific practices for grounding, centering, finding our peace, becoming more peaceful. And as you and I were chatting about just prior to starting the show, the practice of simplicity or simplifying our lives is a big one. So I'll, I guess I'll start with that. <laughs> We live in a very complex time. We have so much expected of us. Everyone's lives are busy. Stress is kind of the word on everyone's lips. And one of the things that can help us is to start to strip things away. And it seems counterintuitive because we live in this culture of more, more, more. We want to do more, be more, read more, get more stuff. And to simplify, to say less is more is kind of radical. But there is also this movement towards minimalism. And so I think we can also kind of appreciate it from that standpoint that having less stuff and having less activities and having just less on our minds coming at us is a radical choice towards our own inner peace. Uh, So kind of assessing how we might simplify our lives. That would be a number one practice. It's refreshing to hear that. And it's joyful for me to hear that in actuality. I've subscribed to that for many years. However, I'm at a point now where I need to find a, a balance 
because when you simplify or you take things away, it can be extreme. It can be yeah. extreme and it can be isolated to some degree. I don't watch the news, but I will read a newspaper, a trusted source. So I talk to my mom and she was like, no, and she'd go on and on. I couldn't have a clue what she's talking about. She would get so aggravated with me. Because you know, people, are, people are, many people are very addicted to the news. They pop it on as soon as they wake up in the morning and, and it's on as background noise throughout the day. It's the last thing they look at before they go to bed. And I would definitely counsel to reevaluate that if that is your pattern because for example uh, you mentioned trusted sources and i think it's become glaringly obvious that none of our news sources <laughs> are 100 percent trustworthy it doesn't matter which side of politics or things you're on so i live in hawaii and i got a text the other day from a friend who lives on the mainland and she's like are you okay i heard about the tsunami and i was like the what uh let me get back to you while I go check my trusted local news source to see if there's a tsunami about to hit my house. <laughs> Meanwhile, it was, I mean, we get these all the time out here. We live on a rock in the middle of the Pacific. And, but for it to actually become some, a threat to our well being here on the island, it has to upgrade through all different levels, just like a hurricane or a tornado or anything would. And it was, this is the, how overblown the news is. So here it is, the, some news station somewhere in Chicago or something is telling everyone that Hawaii is about to be taken out by a tsunami. Meanwhile, people in Hawaii are just going about their Saturday with nothing's happening. It was just a complete overblown. So that being said, how do, you, how do, how do we want to start our days? I want to start it in peace like you. I don't want to turn on some half truth nonsense and fill my headspace and my heart space with that energy. I start my day in silence. I feed my animals. I read something inspirational or I meditate. I go outside on my lanai and I look at the trees. I breathe. And then I decide what I want to let in. I think that's healthy. And I have a very similar practice. Uh, I don't look at my phone. I don't look at emails. I don't watch the news. I sometimes have Native American food to it. Watch the sunrise. I'm always up before the sun. And you can hear yourself think when you do that. And this is something that I think a lot of people are very disconnected from. They're disconnected from their own inner voice. It's really hard to know how to navigate <clears throat> all the changes that we're faced with, all the uncertainty that we're faced with in this day and time when we are not located in our own inner guidance, our own intuitive response to things. And so these quiet moments that we're called to build into our days, to me, are absolutely essential to hear that inner truth of what is important to me and what my right next steps are and how I should respond to the things that are in front of me and the people that are around me and what's being asked of me on any given day. I can't do that well if I'm not listening deeply internally. And so I write a lot about self-inquiry, the practice of inner reflection. One of my books is a book of questions, Spark Change as a book of questions, self-inquiry questions that we can use to start to hear that inner voice. Give me an example. I always like to just pull one randomly. I believe in the uh, power of bibliomancy, as they call it. So let's just see what I pull up. Oh, well, there you go. Perfect. Question number 77. What is my intuition whispering to me now? The first line of description is the voice of intuition is always sending us subtle signals, nudging us toward your higher good. And so the... These questions are followed by a little passage of explanation of how to work with the question. But this concept of our inner voice or our intuition, it really is. It's our highest self guiding us in the ways that we need to be guided in our lives. So that was actually a perfect example based on what we're talking about. That's interesting. And I wonder about having full agency or having the control to pause at any given time, maybe it's the morning, maybe it's the afternoon, maybe it's the evening, depending on what the lifestyle is, pause so that you can, I'm going to say, hear it. Absolutely. And I love that you use the word control because it's actually the best use of that word. You use the word agency and control. And 
many people feel very out of control in their daily lives. I mean, there's much that is not within our control in the big picture of life. But what we have agency or control over is our inner experience and our ability to respond to what we're faced with. So we don't know what's going to come at us on any given day, but we do have the control, self-control over how we show up to it, how we respond to it, how we process it emotionally within ourselves. This is the place, the inner space is where we have control and we need to utilize it. We need to develop it. Many people do not have good self-control, which is why we see so much addictive behavior in our culture. And it's a lack of self-control. That practice is fundamental in yoga therapy, which has been my path for the last 25 years. The yoga philosophy teaches that in addition to simplicity, another one of the fundamental principles of yoga philosophy is self-control. On your website, I believe you explain what yoga therapy is. And I wanted to dig into that a little bit. Uh, you say that it's a psycho-spiritual aspect of the practice of yoga and intuitive dialogue. I guess I'll frame this in really what is yoga, because many people only have experienced yoga as the physical postures that they might find in a typical Western yoga class. But yoga in the big picture is a science of living. And so it is a philosophy of how to live in harmony with oneself and with universal principle. So the maintenance of the body via the postures is one aspect of that. The maintenance of our energy via the breath and how we exchange energy with the world around us is another aspect of that. These principles of living, such as simplicity or self-control, those are also aspects of the philosophy of yoga. Then I'll go into what yoga therapy is. So when I'm working with a client in my yoga therapy practice, what I'm offering is therapeutic counsel for whatever imbalance they might be experiencing, whether that's physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual via the lens of yoga philosophy. So what does yoga philosophy have to say about when we're experiencing a particular disease of the body or a particular emotional or mental experience, such as anxiety or depression. And so we're applying this philosophy, this science of living to everything that might be coming up for someone. That, that's good stuff right there. I took my first yoga class about three weeks ago. It wasn't easy. Well, this is challenging, right? Whether we're trying to put ourselves into a headstand or whether we're trying to practice self-control, which I would say they're kind of akin, but to live a balanced life, to live a life that is intentional is not easy. It's why many people just sort of float along and ignorance is bliss. But to become conscious, to be become intentional about how we are engaging with life and with our own bodies and our own experiences, it is work. It takes work. It's not easy all the time, but it's very gratifying. And it does create the landscape for our lives to unfold in a much more joyful way. Many of us that are aware and tuned in ultimately seem to want to experience joy, peace, and freedom. It's just understanding what it will take to, I'm not going to say achieve it, but to live it or to. Yeah, it's already within us. Those are, those qualities are already within us. It's really about stripping away the things that block us from experiencing them. Now, in your practice, since you brought that up, when you're working with your clients, what are some of the blocks you see often that seem to be a recurrent theme in some, some of the work that you're doing with your clients? Well, fundamentally, I think the biggest block that we all experience is, and this shows up in different manifestations, but fundamentally, it's always this, is that we identify ourselves as limited human beings, and we've forgotten that we're actually limitless spiritual beings. And so this re-identifying of ourself is fundamental to everything that I do with any of my clients, whether they walk in knowing that that's what we're going to do or not, it is, it is the basis of our suffering, really, when we forget ourselves. 
spiritual essence. I feel it's the basis of our suffering. And as we reintegrate the spiritual aspect of self in a meaningful way for each person, which is extremely unique for each person, we experience a lot more peace and freedom and joy beyond the misidentification of self. I would say what that creates is a lot of fear. When we feel small and separate and uh, limited, we feel afraid. But when we feel connected and integrated, we don't feel so afraid. So that fear is usually the, the obvious sign that someone is not in integration with their highest self. We don't have to look far to see how much generalized anxiety exists in our culture right now. I mean, with stress levels as high as they are and anxiety, just everywhere you look, you're reading about it, hearing about it. People are talking about having it. And I mean, it speaks to a fundamental inner conflict that's going on with the person. And so we have to look at what is in conflict within any one of us. And as we start to resolve those inner conflicts, then we start to experience less anxiety and fear. When we first opened up our conversation, you talked about travel, that you have some travel coming up. Is this business travel? Is it Jenny Lee travel? What's your travel going to be about? What's your destination? Ah, a little bit of all of the above. I'm heading to Italy. I run a wellness retreat, a yoga meditation wellness retreat every year in some beautiful place. And this year it's going to be in Tuscany, Italy. So I'm very excited about that. I will be adding some personal travel along with it. But speaking of fear, travel, I know many people are excited to get back out there and travel, but a lot of people are afraid still to travel. There's many factors involved with that. And there's constantly changing logistics. This retreat that I am running this June has been on the books for three years. I can't believe we're finally going to accomplish it. And I was just talking to my group the other day about how much uncertainty there is, how the rules are changing every day with airlines and whether it's mask mandates or vaccine requirements or whatever, we, we all have to be always updating, but that we can enter this world of uncertainty with courage and with love in our hearts and really walk out into this connection with the world again, not in fear, but in joy and in harmony and anticipation, even if there is uncertainty, even if there are unknowns, it's okay. Well, that's a big trip for anyone actually um, to travel abroad right about now. Like you say, perhaps you travel with an open mind, control the controllables. And that's pretty much yourself. That's what you can't control. Not anyone. Exactly. Exactly. So this retreat to Tuscany. It's a week long. It's going to be at a beautiful villa. And we'll have yoga and meditation every day. We'll be 24 people on this one. So nice big group, yoga and meditation every day, some touring in the countryside, visiting vineyards and olive oil estates and the Cogs, just really absorbing the Italian culture. I speak Italian, so it's a place of my heart and I love sharing the joys of that culture and the people there with my students and guests. It's a real joy. I've been leading retreats for over 15. This will be my 15th or 16th retreat, I think, that I've led. So they're always very joyful experiences. And people come back year after year. I have some people who have done eight or nine retreats with me, I think. So it's a lot of fun. The last retreat I went on, I think it might have been four years ago. And for me, it was in my backyard, but everyone else had to travel to get there. It's in Tucson, Arizona, to Mirabal Spa. Nice. A week long. It was really good for everyone. And that's why we learned a lot, took a lot of classes, a lot of seminars, relaxed meditated. That space, talking again about space to hear yourself. I do believe that a retreat each year is really important and a beautiful investment in oneself. I know it's not financially accessible to everyone, but there are ways to do it simply even in your own home. I've coached people through doing personal weekend long retreats in their own home where they're just focused on a really clean diet and a lot of quiet time and personal reflection. And so as lovely as it is to travel somewhere exotic, you can also do it right in 
like you said, in your own backyard or even in your own home. You are everywhere in terms of accessibility. I see that you are on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter too. I'm mostly, Instagram is kind of the platform that I engage with most. Your page is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's so inspirational. Just, oh. I mean, when I opened it up, it gave me a very calming energy. Right. I appreciate that. I appreciate the work that you're doing because it's needed right about now. You mentioned there's so much coming at us from every single direction that we do owe it to ourselves to check in to what we may need for ourselves. Absolutely. Some of us are just running and running and running and running and don't even realize that we do need to kind of stop and check in just a bit. Right. And so the book that we drew that question out of is called Spark Change, 108 Provocative Questions for Spiritual Evolution. And the reason I wrote that book is because people, when they stop, when they try to meditate or do this kind of inner inquiry, they often don't know really what even they need or what what am I listening for? Or where do I go? So these questions are a way for people to kind of peel back those inner layers to get to that inner truth. They came from the process that I've taken a lot of my yoga therapy clients through over the years, over the last two decades. So these questions are very tried and true in terms of the layers of inner inquiry that they take someone through. That brings me to a question I wanted to ask you. Your clients are probably drawn to you based on what they see of you that they would like to see reflected in their own life in terms of the joy the peace, the intentional, purposeful living, things of that nature. When you're working with a client, is your relationship with them a long-term relationship or is it confined to a certain amount of time? Every client is a bit different. I have some clients that I've worked with for over 10 years, pretty consistently. I have other clients that come and do maybe three or six months worth of work. And then whatever they're working on feels complete. So it's like any therapeutic relationship. I think it depends on the person, what they're going through. Many people come and work with me when they're going through some sort of a transition, a relationship transition, a job change, time of life. Maybe the kids have left the house and they're in that empty nester time, or there's lots of different life transitions that we all go through. And so it's often at those times that people need some coaching, counseling, guidance in how to kind of find their stability again, and to hear what their highest wisdom is guiding them towards as they open that new chapter. In fact, my theme for the Italy retreat is joyful new beginnings. So we're going to be taking a deep dive into transitional times because this certainly is a transitional time for all of us. That is really, really fantastic that you actually are moving in that direction because we talked about the fear or anxiety that many people feel about moving in any direction, especially to your point, the uncharted territory. I talked to a lot of people about their next chapter and so many others who would like to embrace a new chapter and don't know how to get started with it because of the anxiety of leaving what they currently have, even though their soul is telling them this is what they should be preparing to do. It doesn't mean that it has to take place like the very next day or that type of thing. It's just that in preparation for that, there's an opportunity during that period of time to get clarity. Absolutely. To get clarity. So I think there's important timing that you have for this retreat because there's a lot of people who are kind of like in that little space where they're thinking about it, but just don't know how to embrace it. Yes. Well, you've granted us some opportunities for wisdom with the three books that you have. Anything in the works for a fourth book? There is a book in the works. I don't know a timeline on it yet. I don't talk about title or content until it's ready to actually be born. So we'll see what the next year brings. Okay. okay. Well, I will definitely have to stay tuned. I appreciate you giving us an opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you today. I know your time is at a premium. So thank you. I appreciate chatting with you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Next Chapter Experience. If you have already subscribed, rated, and left a review, or shared this podcast with a friend, many, many thanks. For 
questions, comments, or feedback, reach out to me at Jeanette Blissett at nextchapterexperience.com. We'll be back with more conversations. So until then, keep that fire burning.